I've talked about databases a lot in this class, and now it's time for us to really get into them. Um, I'm hoping that the information that I give you in this lecture at least makes you a good user of databases because you're going to need to be a user of databases throughout the whole rest of your life. I'm hoping in addition, however, that it entices you to maybe get a little bit deeper into databases, maybe even try your hand at creating some of your own. The concepts that I give you will be a, a, enough of a starting point that you could actually move into that if you wanted to. All right, there's many kinds of databases out there, and we're really not going to focus on on any but one specific kind, and that's the relational database. Now, it's, it's worth it to say that um, services like Google and Facebook long since realized that relational databases, the way that we're going to talk about them, are just too slow. And they can't do, you know, rela relational databases in the first place were invented to hold a lot of information and give us access to a lot of information. Well, <laughs> Google and Facebook have found that they're not good enough for that and they have to move to things that are much more scaled down, much more stripped down than the databases that we're going to talk about in order to deal with the huge volume of uh, transactions that they have to deal with. But it is the case that databases were invented to deal with huge volumes of transactions, just not as huge as those guys have come across. So in the years that they've been further and further optimizing to get their, their, their um, their systems further and further able to deal with huger and huger volumes of information. Really, Google and Facebook have had to transcend most of the most of the common principles of, of regular old relational databases. But we're not going to transcend them. And in fact, we'll talk about the relational databases that are behind gaming applications um, in the next module. And this will this will be a pretty good inter introduction to that as well. So databases are used everywhere. They're just not used in the very, very high-end, huge, huge, huge transaction volumes. But everywhere else they're used, you'll be interacting with them for the rest of your life. And the kind of database that you'll interact with the most is called the relational database. And we'll talk about why it's called that in just a moment. Okay, so I want to get into the idea of, of databases and get, get, them, get you into them as quickly as possible. And I think the best way to do this is to look at something that you're more likely to be familiar with than a database, and that's Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel consists of spreadsheets. It's a spreadsheet application. Well, what's a spreadsheet? A spreadsheet's really a table, right? It's a table, and what does a table have? A table has rows and columns. Those are the fundamental concepts of Excel. They're also the fundamental concepts of databases. Databases also have tables, rows, and columns. The big difference between the way you work with tables, rows, and columns in Excel versus the way you work with tables, rows, and columns in databases is really one of scale, it's not of type. So in Excel, you generally have a table, right? You open up Excel, and even though they give you different, you know, you can have different worksheets in Excel, usually you're just working with one. And if you are working with more than one, there's not a whole lot of relationship between the first and the second one. And if you try to make a lot of relationships between the first spreadsheet and the second spreadsheet, you get into trouble. That's where it gets complex. So most people don't do that. Most people try to keep it to one spreadsheet, and for that it works really well. And how does that spreadsheet work exactly? Well. We have a table, right? We figure everything in that table is all of a certain sort. So let's, you know, what do we have here? We have um, a person. So each row of this table is a different person, right? So the table itself, the spreadsheet itself, is a person. And uh, it's all information about people. Each row is a different person. Each column is a different piece of information about that person. Now, in a moment, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna merge this with the concepts we had before, that idea of information types and uh, and um, attributes and values and all that, right? And all that kind of stuff. It's going to get there. But let's take it a little slow. So start from Excel and realize that the three basic concepts in Excel are the table, the row, and the column. The table is a kind of information. The row is one item of that information. And each column is one attribute of that information. It's one quality. And in the column, in the intersection of a row and column, you type in a value, right? That's how Excel works. And then we can do calculations and charts and all that kind of stuff. That's how Excel works. Now, if I just have something as simple as a single table with rows and columns, then I could say exactly the same thing about a database. I have a, on the screen here, I have a screenshot of sort of the most common end user database called Microsoft Excel. It's likely that it's sitting there on your computer if you have Microsoft Office. Um, you're likely to run into it over and over again in your career. It's actually, you know, for what it is, it's a, it's a pretty good product that gives you a, a good entry level way of getting into databases. And so a lot of people, you know, they, they go with more high-end web databases, MySQL or something like that. But Access actually is a very good way of, of, um, of getting into databases and, and understanding about them. So the point here is I have a picture of Excel, I have a picture of Access, and if you squint your eyes, you can hardly tell the difference. 
they're really very very similar in access and in excel i have tables rows and columns the table is a people table it's all the information about t people every row of the table in either case is a different person and every column in the table is a different attribute a different quality of that person and in the intersection of the rows and columns is the value so in row one i have an id um, excuse me in column one i have an id in row one it's the id of this guy abe in row, row two it's bob's id in row three it's kraz's id etc right so you get the idea it's not it's not a hard idea at all so how is it that they're different if this is the way that they're same um, the way that they're different is that in the database it's equally important not only how not only what table we have but how that table is related to other tables so it's not at all uncommon in a database to have dozens or even hundreds of different tables it's really uncommon in Excel to even have more than one most people that I know that have worked with Excel have only worked with one table in Excel one table at a time and some people have worked with two maybe three and they're usually unrelated tables one two and three have no relationship to each other and when they start to do as I said before when they start to do you get into all sorts of trouble in Excel in, if you find yourself in that situation I'm working with more than one table in Excel and I'm getting into trouble because getting keeping them straightened out and keeping them related to each other is just a real big pain it's time to move on to a database so Excel and a database spreadsheets and databases are very similar in that they both have the concept of table what's different about the relational database is that relations between tables are really important and relations between tables count and there's usually many many tables in a single database that's why they're called relational they're 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 really defined by the relations that you have between different tables that are in the database okay and we're going to talk a little bit more about the tables and the relationships as we go on okay so what do databases do databases regardless of what kind of databases but as I said we'll talk about relational databases they always allow you to model the information remember we talked about modeling modeling was create your information types create your attributes create your value patterns right all that kind of stuff create the relationships between um, information types right this time we're starting to merge this very quickly we're gonna merge this um, that's what they do databases allow you to do that databases also store information it's like a file cabinet a place to put all this information it allows you to query the information that is ask questions about what information I have in there it allows you to retrieve the results of those queries so these are the basic operations I model my information which says how is my information put together right just like we've been talking about all along and that's what the database is going to do allows me to store that information in a highly organized way based on the model it allows me to ask questions query that information find out do I have this kind of information give me all the information that has these qualities to it etc etc just like we talked about queries in Google same idea a little bit different approach but the same exact idea I want to find out do I have information of such and such variety and then I get back results and I do something with those results I, I display them in some way that's what all databases will do so let's dive into some of those and um, give some examples and show you how the idea of, first of all show you how the idea of modeling um, that we talked about earlier and the idea of modeling in relational databases is really one and the same okay we said we model types attributes and value patterns right and here's the little diagram I gave you we have a person person has an ID the person is the type right the ID is the attribute and an ID has a particular pattern in this case it's a sequential number got the idea okay that's where we've been we said that they have a birthday and it's a date we said that they have a sex and sex can be either male or female okay now that's the stuff that we've been we've been over before now let's look at how exactly the same stuff looks inside of a database we have a person table or in this case it's called the people table the people table has certain in this case they call them field names but don't be don't be um, don't be thrown by the vocabulary a field name is a column a field name is a column in table terminology it's an attribute in our other table terminology sorry that there's so many words to describe these same things but that's just kind of how it is there's lots of words all describing the same thing so we have the table it's the people table we have a set of attributes ID first name last name address sex birthday notice it matches exactly with our model over here and then we have data type data type is another way of saying value pattern and if you look below there's lots of information here I've circled the male female part so notice somewhere down there in the below area we're able to say that 
sex is either male or female. You don't get to have something, you don't get to have a third choice there. You have to choose either male or female. That's the way we set up the model. And now, so first thing to notice is that everything that's in our visual model over here is also in our database model on the other side of the screen. So all the stuff that you can do in our visual model, you can also do in our database model. Second thing to notice is that, gee, there's a whole lot more there. There's a bunch of stuff in there that, you know, I don't, I wouldn't know how to put in my visual model. And that's really the case. The database model is really, really, really specific and exact and gives you a whole lot finer control over, for example, a, an attribute pattern than we've ever, we've ever talked about in this class. And so it's a, it's a machine, it's a mechanical way of encoding all of these things that up until now we've just looked at visually. And that's really the idea of the modeling inside of a database is that it makes it really real and it makes it really precise and it makes it really exact. It's a well-honed model, it's a very well-honed model and you get some small indication about all the different nuances of it if you look at the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of the picture here and you see all the different things that you can specify about that attribute that um, you may not have even known you would want to specify and believe me there's more there's more than just this there okay so our models specify types attributes and value patterns databases specify types attributes and value patterns and the only difference is the vocabulary that they use I chose the vocabulary of types, attributes, and value patterns because I wanted to be as generic as possible. In, um, in database terminology, we don't say types, attributes, and value patterns. We'll say tables for types, we'll say um, columns for attributes, and we'll say data types for value patterns. But in, st but in all other ways, it's really the same. Okay, so in addition, um, in addition to modeling types, attributes, and value patterns, we also model the relationships between types. Now remember before I said that in a spreadsheet you have one table, in a database you have many tables, and those tables are all related. Now I'm going to show you how they're related. Here was a, here's, a, here's a model of person, event, and location. And notice that a person has an address, and that address is a location, right? Your address is a location. And events also have a location, and the location of the event is a location. So we have these three information types. We have person, location, and event, but they're all related because people have locations and events have locations. So that's our conceptual model. And now let's look at how that's done mechanically inside of a database. So the second picture here, the non-bubble picture, the picture with the squares, is a picture of the database model, how all of those different types are related to each other. Notice we have people and events and location. And notice there's a little line going from people and there's a little line going from event. In event, in people, sorry, we have something called an address. And that line is going from address to the ID of a location. In event, we have location. And that location is going to the ID of a location. That's exactly the same as, as both of these diagrams are exactly the same. The only difference is the mechanics. The only difference is also the specificity. So there's many things I can say about that relationship that I can't say in this visual diagram, just like there was many things I could say about the, um, about the attribute value patterns that I couldn't say in the diagram. Diagrams are really good conceptually, but when it comes to getting down to the details, you need the power and the discrimination and the subtlety of the database. So databases model. Databases model everything that we need to model. And, they, and so they're a very good way of making this idea of an information model really real. All right, so let me, let me come back to this idea of deliverables because I want to tie this down to sort of what does a person actually do. I'm a modeler. I create information models. I figure out all the stuff that we've been talking about. And in the end, what do I give back? What do I give to my boss? What do I do? I give my boss what's called a schema. And so you see here a picture of a schema. It's got a bunch of different tables and a bunch of different lines. You can think of each of those tables as a type of information and each of the lines being a relationship between those types of information and each of the little things inside the box being one attribute of that type. So we have types in the different tables, the different squares. We have attributes inside the tables, inside the little lines inside the tables. We don't show the attribute values here. I mean, excuse me, we don't show the attribute value patterns here um, because it's too much detail for this diagram. But we do show the relationships from one type to another. So that's what the overall big picture is. And a little bit later when we talk about World of Warcraft and, uh, and the information model behind World of Warcraft and behind all the, um, uh, and behind all the information types in, in World of Warcraft, I'll show you a Mondo schema. This is a little schema. This, you know, this schema is 
microscopic. This would be a very small project. Real, real schemas have, can literally have hundreds of tables in them. They take an entire wall to show all the different types of information and all the different relationships between them. So the deliverable is a schema. You're a modeler. When you're finished with your model, you deliver it as a schema. That schema is a structure of a database where we can store all the information for this system. All right, we've talked about how databases model information. Now let's talk about how databases store information. When talking about storing information, let's be a little bit more specific than just saying storing. Let's say that databases, relational databases in particular, are capable of storing and when they store, they're either adding information, deleting information, or changing information. So what gets added, deleted, or changed? So let me, let me add one thing from before that, uh, that I, I neglected to really focus on, and that's the idea that tables have rows and columns, and uh, tables have rows and columns, right? In each row is one item of information. So we talked about before that we have information types, information attributes, information values, and information items. The item of information is one row in the database, one row in the table. And as I add new rows, I'm adding new items of information. So remember we said, for example, that uh, a person in Facebook is an item of information. Your name, your address, your birthday, etc., etc. Now look at that people table. Inside the people table is exactly that same thing. It's one person inside of Facebook. And so that's the idea, that a row of information also called a record, and I'm sorry for yet another vocabulary word. I'll, I'll try to stay with the word row. Even though you'll hear often in your life, you'll hear the word record. I'll try to stay with the word row. Um, one row of information is one item of information, is one particular person. The type is, the, is a person in general, but the type doesn't really have information about you in it. The item has information about you. So if that's, if that's um, hard to understand, go over it with your TA or come back and, and talk to me about it, and we'll, we'll go over that further. At any rate, when you add information to the database, you add one row. You add one row of information. You're adding one item of information. You can also delete one item of information. So you get rid of your Facebook account, and they delete your people record, right? They delete your people row. Um, or you can change. Or so, so you can either add or delete entire rows, entire items. You can also add or delete values. So I can put, you know, um, I didn't specify my birthday the first time I went into Facebook, and now I go into Facebook and I specify my birthday. I've added my birthday to the column inside the row. That's the item for me. Okay, or I can delete that value because I don't want it in there anymore. Or I can change that value. I could go in and change my birthday because I typed it wrong the first time or whatever. Or I change my address because I moved, right? Or I change my current, you know, um, uh, girlfriend because I changed my girlfriend or whatever it is on Facebook. Okay, so, um, uh, what we, so storing information breaks down to adding, deleting, and changing. You can add or delete whole rows. You can ch add or delete values inside of rows, those columns, or you can just change the column. You can change it from A to B. Okay, and what I have on the screen here is just a little piece of, uh, a, a little piece of some application, a piece of user interface, and that piece of user interface shows this idea of adding, updating, and deleting records. And in this case, um, they, uh, uh, they, it looks like they created a new record here. So you filled in the box. The box has all the values. You click OK. And those values then create a new row in the database. And we have um, more information in the database. We've added information to the database. OK, so databases store information by adding, deleting, or updating that information or changing that information. All right, so we said that databases model covered that. We said that databases store covered that. Now we're going to talk about querying and retrieving information. Databases query information. Databases retrieve information. And in order to give you this idea, I'm going to introduce something called the structured query language, SQL. And really, you don't need to know anything about SQL except the few facts on that are on the screen. SQL is a big language. There's lots you could know about it, but all I really want you to know about is these few things that I put on the screen. So first thing is I want a certain number of columns. I want to see a certain number of columns. I use the word select for that. Second thing is I want to use a certain number of tables. I want to, I want to see information from a certain number of tables. I use the word from for that. And I want to know, I want to see them based on which values. I want to select columns from a table based on values, and I use the word where from that. Okay, so I'm going to run through a couple of, um, of, of 
uh, simple queries and I won't hold you to anything that's any more complicated than what, than what you see on the screen here, but I will hold you to understanding at least the ideas of this, this level of query. Again, select says which columns I care about, from says which tables I care about, and where says which values I care about, or, or the records that have certain values are the ones I care about. So let's look at the example, the first example. So I have this, um, I have the same table that we've, that we've looked at before. It's the people table. People have IDs, people have first names, last names, addresses, sex, birthday, right? Those are the, th those are the columns. Those are the different things that I have about, um, about each person. And now I'm going to create a query because I want to find certain people. That's the idea of the query. I ask a question. Show me all the people who have blue eyes. Show me all the people who have this birthday. Show me all the females. Show me all the males, right? Those are the questions that I'm going to ask about the people that are in my database. And here's how I'm going to construct a few simple ones. Select first name and last name. So what does that mean? It means I want to see the first name and the last name columns in my results. I want to see, I want to, that's what I want to know. I want to know their first name and last name. From people. People is the name of the table. So go to the people table, grab the first name and last name column where the sex equals M. In other words, they're males, right? Sex is either male or female. Um, and so I'm going to, um, I'm going to select all the records, oh excuse me, I'm going to select all the rows from the people table where the sex of the person is male and I'm going to show the first name and the last name of those people. And then we see, so you can see the query and then you can see the results here. It happens that there are two people with, that are males and I'm seeing their first name and their last name just like I asked for. Okay, notice I don't see anything else about them. I don't see their sex because I didn't ask to see their sex. When I said select, it's only telling me which columns I want to see. When I say from, it's telling me which table I want to see it from. And when I say where, that's telling me under what conditions, under what uh, constraints do I want to see them. So I'm only seeing the males, sex equals M. I'm seeing only the people table, and I'm seeing only the first name and last name from that people table. Okay, that's query number one. Let's look at one that's slightly, slightly larger, and it'll, t it'll show you a little bit more, and it's just just barely hints at the power here. There's a huge amount of power in querying. There's a huge amount to know. There's all sorts of things you could do with queries. We're really, really, really just scratching the surface of databases, but I want you to have at least this much knowledge so that you get the basic idea and so that if you care to go forward with the idea of databases, you'll have a starting place. Okay, second query. Select address, first name, and last name. So I want their address, I want their first name, and I want their last name. And notice when I look at the results, I see address, first name, and last name, right? So when I, it's called run, when I run the query, it goes and asks the questions, and it brings back the results. It shows me some results. Okay, so I say I want the last name, first name, and uh, address, first name, and last name. There it is, address, last name, first name, um, from the people table. So I'm searching the people table. And where, which ones do I want? You know, there may be thousands of records or thousands of rows in the, in the people table. Which ones do I want? I want the ones where sex equals female and birthday is greater. See that where it says birthday greater than? 11, 15, 2011. So these are all the females that have a birthday later than 11, 15, 2011. So 11, 16, 11, 17 and on. Okay, so that turns up to be two people, Kraz and Deb. And that's where I get back in the results. And so notice, I'm, I brought back two different people, but I didn't bring back all the information about those people. I just brought back some amount that I wanted, just a little bit of information about them. Okay, so this is important because I want you to be able to do what I just did for queries that are at this level of simplicity. And, and really, this is the first level of simplicity of a query. They get much, much more difficult, but this is the level that I want you to know them at. And I want you to be able, if I give you a table that shows you all the records, I want you to be able to see a query that's about as simple as these here and tell me what I would see, tell me what the results are that I would see. Okay, so we said that databases um, model, and I showed you how they model. We said that databases store, I showed you how they store information. We said that databases query and retrieve information, and I showed you how we query them and how we retrieve them using a standard, really a standard thing that goes across all databases, which is the structured query language. And I showed you only really the tip of the SQL, the Structured Query Language Iceberg. There's tons more to know, but I'd like you to know at least this much about it and to be able to figure out these queries. All right, so the final thing I want to do is to return to something we looked at earlier, 
and now you can see the final result. So when I get back these results like I just showed you, it's just a table, right? It's like it's like an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. That's not going to make a web page. That's not going to make um, you know, that's not what I want to see. What I want to see is a nice web page with formatting and stuff like that. So there's one more step I have to take. I have to go from that set of results, those rows that I got back from my query to some presentation of the information on a nice web page where it's all, you know, perfectly formatted. Um, and so I showed you this, this slide earlier under the life cycle of information and I want to return to it now to show you that this is, how it, this is how it works. I have all this information in my rows. Now don't worry that the rows are a little bit, you know, they're, they're a little bit, um, the format of these rows is a little bit different than the one before because this is from an earlier slide deck. But the idea is really the same. I grab the information from the results and I place it at different places on the page. And if you remember from before, there's a couple of points to be made from this. First is that the name, or the first is that the, the information on the web page is nicely formatted. The information in the table is just kind of no formatting at all, right? So I have that name Bob Boyko up there and it's big and bold, but it wasn't big and bold in the database. It was just as it is in the database. When I put it on the page, it's nice and big and bold. It's formatted in the way that I want it to be. That's item, that's point number one. Point number two is I don't have to display all the information that I get back. For example, I got back birthday, I got back birthday from my query, but it's nowhere on the page because I chose not to display it on the page. I didn't feel like it, there was no reason for it, or maybe I used to and I decided against it and so it's just sitting out there now. The third point to be made is the same piece of information, in this case address, can be shown in two different places on the page. I can use that piece of information as many times as I want, including no times at all, I can put it anywhere I want on the page and I can have it look however I want. Okay, you got the idea? So the whole, the whole, the whole structure here is I model the information, I store information, right? I model the information like people, for example. I store the people information in there. I get all the people information stored in my database. I, um, I query that to get back the, the, just the people that I want after storing thousands and thousands of people. I query just to get back the maybe the one or the two or the three, three people that I want then I put, take the results and I display them on a page any way that I want, with any formatting that I want, in any order that I want. I can display the same thing three times. I can choose not to display it at all. And that gives me a tremendous amount of flexibility. Therein lies the entire, you know, the, the entire kind of microcosm of how an information system works. I create a structure. I fill that structure full of information. I get stuff back out of that structure as I need it, depending on what I want. And then I choose which way I want to display it. All right, so I'm going to conclude with this final deliverable here called the template. What I've been talking about just now is really the idea of templates. I create a template and that template shows how I'm going to display my information from my database on the website page. The template is the page without any information on it. It talks about the things that we mentioned. It talks about the formatting. Which piece of information goes in which place? What is it going to look like? If I don't have anything in my template for birthday, birthday is not going to show up on the page. If I then go and add something to my template for birthday, then the birthday will come into the page. So the template is the deliverable, and the template, as I show in this diagram here, is a nice, beautiful presentation with some kind of dummy content in it, dumb kind of dummy information, showing the position and the formatting of all the information, and pointing to it and, pointing to it and saying, oh, this piece comes from here, and this piece comes from here, this is called this, this is what we're going to do with this piece, and this is what we're going to do with that piece. Okay, that's databases. Databases model, databases store, databases query and retrieve. And what we do with the retrieved information is we put it on the web page.